Det ska behöva monster. Come watch Thomas suffer. Make sure I charge my Garmin, make sure I've charged my lights Make sure we get those bars in 10 miles and I'll be more than starving Nothing compares to the thrill, underprepared for the hills I used to get wheels on air, now I put air in my wheels Change that tune, train and cruise, chain's been lewd Pace and move, Strava stats give man a heart attack But then my pace improves, bars and cadence are strong Now my legs up, my cadence are long It's about time we do this, it's the cycling tattooist What is up guys, if you're new here, my name's Thomas Martinez and welcome to the channel. And if you're a regular, then welcome back. Now you join me this morning in Porta de la Cruz in Tenerife. And uh, I've been here a few days now and I've been having an absolute blast. I can really see why this place is such a hot spot for cyclists now. The roads and the scenery here are pretty bloody incredible. So yeah, it's no surprise that a lot of pros from across the world come here to Tenerife because it really is that good. Anyways, one of the things, if you're a cyclist and you come to Tenerife, you have to ride up the famous Mount Tide. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Today's the day, let's go. So we're on the road. I'm only about five miles or so into this climb right now, but we're already blessed with some amazing views. Look at that! Oh man. But yeah, I've just been worming my way through the, uh, the small towns dotted around the base of the mountain, and we're, we're going up. The Garmin is saying 19.3 miles to the top. <laughs> you probably can't make that out very well, but there in the background, that's Mount Tide, there she is. Now, Mount Tide pretty much dominates the island of Tenerife. And uh, yeah, if you're traveling anywhere on the island, then you're pretty much gonna either be going up it or going around it. And that being the case, as I said earlier, if you're a cyclist and you're coming to Tenerife, then you can pretty much guarantee that that's gonna be at the top of your list. And let's face it, there's not many places in the world that you can come and climb up a hill for over 20 miles. It's definitely something to tick off your bucket list. So anyways, Mount Tide, it's actually a volcano. And, uh, well, it's a bit of a monster. It rises up out of the ground to a maximum elevation of 12,188 feet. Now, unfortunately, you can't ride all the way to the top. It's uh, inaccessible. The road itself continues to a maximum elevation of 7,704 feet. So quite a way off of the actual peak. And at that point, as I say, the, uh, the road is no longer. And then you have to get a cable car to the actual top. Or obviously if you're feeling up to it, you could uh, throw on some hiking shoes and get yourself up there. Anyways, let's crack on for a bit. I've got a fair old way to go. Wish me luck. Yep, that is uh, frost on the floor. <laughs> An hour and a half ago, I was down at the beach and now I'm up a mountain and it's bloody freezing. <laughs> it was about 14 degrees down at sea level when I left and uh, the Garmin's now saying that it's five degrees. So a fair old drop. Look, look at this frost. Mental. That's pretty nuts really considering I've still got a long way to go. I've got 13.2 miles to go yet and 3,350 feet of climbing left. You can only imagine, it's gonna get even colder. I did come prepared though. I don't know if you can see back there, packed to the gills. I've obviously got a fair few snacks in there, but more importantly, what I did bring was a jacket and my uh, deep winter gloves. Before I came and I uh, said I was coming here, I had a lot of yous reach out to me that had been here before and said, whatever you do, make sure you bring some decent gloves because it does get cold up there. When you're descending with uh, frostbitten fingers, it's not much fun. 
and you obviously want to have full control of your bike and more importantly your brakes when you're going down a 20 mile long descent <laughs> so yeah i've got my uh, jersey pockets absolutely stuffed i'm sure i'll be very glad when i get to the top and i still have my fingers intact So I've decided to stop real quick. The temperature's dropped even more. It's actually three degrees now and I'm feeling it. So quickly put my jacket and my gloves on, chuck a couple of Oreos down my neck and then onward. So I'm well on my way now, as you can see. I'm right up here on the uh, Mars-like surroundings. I'll tell you what, it's quite windy up here, which is adding another element to an already difficult climb. But I'm not complaining. How can you when you places like this? Oh, it is something else. Anyways, I've got three miles to go and a little over 400 feet left. Ah. Oh bit better of a view of uh, tea day now there in the background it's pretty magnificent just rising up out of the ground there yes yeah, ah I love it I've just ticked over the uh, 7,000 feet of elevation mark I'm not too up on my knowledge about how elevation affects you but I would imagine at this point it definitely does have an effect and uh, I think I'm experiencing it. I definitely feel a little bit tight in the chest and uh, a little bit like, yeah, a bit of a sore throat feeling almost. I don't think I've ever experienced that. So that's it. As you can see, I've made it to the top. That was tough, I'm not gonna lie. An elapsed time of three hours, 36 minutes. And uh, as you can see, I'm here at the uh, cable car. So yeah, you can't physically ride any higher than this. This is uh, the end of the paved roads. If you wanna go higher, you have to get on the cable car and go all the way up there. But as you may have guessed by the title of this video, if that wasn't hard enough, I'm about to make it even harder. So instead of descending the way I come, I'm actually gonna carry on and descend to the south. I couldn't just be happy with climbing up it one of the routes. <laughs> I need to try out two of them. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get myself down, probably stop for some lunch down there, and then I'll be spinning around and heading straight back up. Oh God, wish me luck. I'm definitely gonna need it. have it I'm at the beach again but this time we're in the south so we're just at about 60 miles now so that's how far it is to cross from north to south now I'm gonna turn around and try to do that all over again <laughs> oh what a stupid idea was this <laughs> but before I do that I'll tell you what I really need to eat something luckily there's an abundance of cafes and the restaurants around here this is a very popular part of the island so i'm sure i'll be able to find something i've headed back out of 
Los Cristianos. I'm five miles into the climb right now and I'm suffering. Oh, it's, uh, the temperature has picked up a fair bit and uh, this side of the island is known for being slightly warmer. But uh, yeah, it's 23 degrees according to the Garmin and I'm feeling it. Quite the contrast to the uh, ascent up the other side where I was a bit chilly. Now, I'm absolutely sweating. Anyways, luckily with this climb, it is ever so slightly shorter, which is music to my ears. And the average gradient slightly steeper at 6.2%. Now that obviously means that uh, this climb has less uh, flat and descent in, which means you make up the elevation in a shorter distance, which, well, I guess it's a blessing and a curse. But either way, you can guarantee this is gonna suck. <laughs> I'm gonna try to keep the brakes to a minimum, but I'm definitely gonna need a couple. I'm in a whole world of pain already. And I've got 5,407 feet to go. <laughs> Why do I do these things? All for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> Come watch Thomas suffer. Ah! This sucks. Just decided to have a little celebratory break a minute. I've just hit 15,000 feet total elevation for the day. And uh, whoo, it's hurting. Oh, it's becoming a bit of a suffer fest. <coughs> oh. So I'm just gonna quickly chuck my jacket on, eat a couple of sweeties, and then I'll be on my way. I can't hang about. Because, uh, well, yet again, it's a bit of a race against the dark. Oh, let's do this. Right, so I'm at the top, according to the Garmin. I mean, what do you consider the top? Because, well, we're not at the cable car again. Oh, that means. I've got another climb to do. It's a few more miles up the road before the cable car. So I'll best get cracking. I'll leave you there for a while because, uh, well, this really is a race against the dark now. Less chit chatting and more pedaling. Well, there you go. Oh, that's it. Final bit of climbing for the day. I'm not gonna stop because I've got about 45 minutes to an hour until it gets dark. Here we go. Well, that's it. I've uh, made it back. We're here at Martianes Beach and I couldn't be happier to be back. <laughs> this has been one hell of a ride. It turned out to be a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. I don't know what I was thinking, to be honest. What a day out. Anyways, as you can see, I have failed my mission of getting home before dark. 117.7 miles and a grand total of 16,872 feet of climbing. Woo. That is some day on the bike, I'll tell you. <laughs> right. 
Anyways, I'm going to end this video here. What a day it has been. Couldn't recommend it enough. Well, apart from that last descent, to be honest, that was pretty painful. I was absolutely frozen. I don't recommend that part, but... <laughs> but yeah, if you do want to try that route for yourself, then fill your boots. I'll put a link in the description to the route. And uh, yeah, let me know how you got on. <laughs> so that's it. All I want now is a nice hot shower and a big feed. And I think I've earned it. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Thanks very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.